Welcome to the Pulse Shift News, the home of the Mavstar Observatory. Guys, might be shocking, but we're going to do things a little different today. Um, a bit later on in this video, I want to talk about farmers and what they're going through, not just relating to one country in this world, but globally, about their families, how it's affecting their livelihoods and things like that. So, you know, hopefully you'll stay tuned for that. Before we do, um, like I said, I'm going to do something a little different. Um, we're not going to have the PayPal links in the description and I'm not going to be asking anyone for any donations at all today and uh, the reason for that is is because we have arrived at the end of the month and because of a few key people that regularly support the uh, observatory, the website and of course uh, YouTube channels as well, uh, we've managed to do a little bit better than what we have done the last two months so you know I, I owe it to you guys then just to give you at least a break for one day don't I <laughs> so you know guys I want to mention just a few of the people that have regularly supported this observatory and you know I'll start with uh, Michael uh, Major massive thank you to you and Chris Douglas Joseph Sue Justin uh, K4 set Brian um, Jorsey Solutions Aylo, uh Julie Bradley Linda, Kelly and Danielle and also a thanks to Danny uh, who sent me an email yesterday and shared some information with me you know I read that today and I'll definitely give it a go because I don't know whether a few of you know I'm, um, I do regularly uh, some training it's not major you know at least 20 minutes every day to try and keep in some form of physical fit shape you know I encourage everyone to do that and it doesn't matter how much or how little you do because anything more than nothing is always a benefit so you know keeping yourself in a good shape is great for yourself great for your esteem gives you confidence in yourself and you know I definitely promote that and um, you know I respect uh, you know Danny taking his time out uh, to put this in, this information in an email if he wants me to share it with you guys you know I gladly will and uh, I'm certainly going to give it a try um, so yeah guys, you know, I also am not going to forget our fantastic patrons. A uh, big thank you for you. I know you're there for me every month just as much as those people are on PayPal. You know, at the end of the day, guys, you guys that support this channel, um, you know, I just want to say this, consider, and, and everyone else, you know, I want you to consider this your observatory, and I really don't mind if you tell people that this is your observatory, if they want to get in touch with me, and just uh, get confirmation of that then give them my contact details and I'll do that for you this is your observatory you pay for this guys or actually actually you don't pay for it but you support it and anything that comes off this observatory is yours to use and hopefully you know you know we will try and make a difference um, during this time and over the next <clears throat> four to seven years uh, in at least understanding a little bit more about what is happening with our planet the science that's revolving around that and it gives us a, note, uh, a heads up of what to expect so you know um, you know I just wanted to make a bit of a change in this video and just you know say thank you to you guys because I really appreciate it and it saves my partner throwing me out uh, when I get a bit of support because otherwise I'd be using the family um, budget to you know buy some of the stuff I do for the uh, observatory and of course if I couldn't get some support then the pressure would be on me to at least at this moment take a second job just to help keep up some of the bills around the place so you know I really really appreciate the support and like I say there will be no links there and there will be no asking of support today at least for the last day of the month um, so uh, let's get on to it then guys let's have a little look into you know and discussion about what is going on globally with farmers and their day to day lives and how it's changing and how things are affecting them and in turn how things are affecting us so guys there is no question of a doubt that within the last 30 years we have records and facts supporting the changes that have taken place and it is most likely as it looks to do with one of two things a grand solar minimum or a magnetic pole excursion or shift or reversal whichever you like but it seems to be affecting directly one breed of people globally right now 
and that is because of the change of seasons, the change in the weather patterns, the change generally in the growing conditions with regards to agro across the range and it doesn't seem to be mattering which country it's in right now every country is being directly affected by what seems to be changes to either the grand solar minimum or the magnetic pole reversal these things are on the increase as I've pointed out recently in these videos and first on the ground to feel the effects are these farmers and you know the only purpose of this video really is to give you a bit of an understanding as to you know what is going on and how it's affecting their lives and we can look at different countries if we look at some of the westernized countries where we use high-tech agricultural equipment that's probably sat nav guided around the fields for precision farming uh, to even India uh, in the, some of the slightly older methods that they use it is something that is affecting all them people right now on the ground and in turn it does affect us because it affects the prices that we pay for our goods and sometimes when we pick up a computer um, sorry a cucumber a watermelon an orange an apple you know we don't give it any thought as to what it has taken to put that in the shelves to start with and you know when these guys have their seasons affected and they are probably one of the hardest working uh, people in the world you know they have to get up you know if they're dairy farmers they're getting up at two three o'clock in the morning you know they're milking the cows they're having to put with <clears throat> all sorts of you know weather but nevertheless they they go about the business regardless and you know they still turn out the produce for us to buy in the shops and it makes it nice and easy doesn't it guys when we walk into the shop and pick a bottle of milk up at least we haven't had to milk the cow and clean up all the mess after us and provide you know good grass for that cow to eat to keep it you know producing milk and you know we've had, you know and it's not just looking after the grass it's actually looking after the soil uh, to make sure the nutrients are there to start with so that the grass that those cows eat or haylage or soilage that they eat it's there the nutrients are in there because if they're not trust me you know they don't produce milk and you know it causes a lot of other physical effects that probably a vet would explain better to you but you know everything seems to come from the quality of the soil if you've got good quality soil to start with you end up with good quality products at the end but the point is this guys is that over in the West, what's happening now as the seasons have changed and you know this arable land is slowly going offline through various reasons. It could be due to the climate, it could also be due to the uh, down to the fact that the ground has been just simply overused and it is no longer becoming viable to put the nutrients in the ground to grow the crops to start with unless the crops are going to demand higher value prices at the end. Then there's going to be an incentive for the farmer to do it. But there's another problem. You know, these farmers' equipments aren't cheap sometimes. You know, a combine harvester here in the UK can cost a million pounds. And in order for them to afford that, they take out loans based on the fact that they're going to enjoy good seasons where they're going to be profitable and return the money back for those uh, agricultural plant equipment. And, you know, if they have a bad season, they can't meet the payments back on that and they've probably secured the loan on the property and the land that they have as a result of this you know it goes into receivership with the bank that borrowed the money out at the start if they can't you know repay these bills they lose the land and that simply means that the agriculture line uh, land or arable land goes completely offline and that's one less farmer we've got looking after you know probably a couple of hundred hectares of land and that means there's a couple of hundred hectares less food in our shops and so the prices go up of food as you know it's the same with any commodity it could be gold if there's lots of gold in the market the prices are low if there's little gold in the market the prices are high there is no difference it's even become the same these days guys here in the uk at least and i know for europe america canada australia you know people have become commodity if there's a lot of people in the workforce the wages have gone down and they have and i think you guys realize that as well you know salaries go down when there's a lot of people on the work work market you know that need a job and the reason why there's a lot of people that need jobs right now is because technological advancement has led to the reduction in labor simple we are heading into some dark times 
for many reasons guys and it's only a matter of time before they all catch up with us that's why i say you know i describe the gauntlet as there being many obstacles within the gauntlet it's just a matter of time before we one of these and it has a major catastrophic effect and like we're seeing already with the 10 percent losses of crops coming out of the united states right now we're starting to see global prices of food gradually increase when china lose he thousands of hectares of uh, you know staples the same thing happens it all ends up coming back to our homes when we go to the shops for the prices going up in value but more importantly guys it's these farmers around the world that are feeling the effects of this dramatic changes that are taking place and have done so for the last 30 years let's face it right when we're talking about the grand solar minimum it could quite easily be linked in some way or form to the pole reversing on this planet although there is a time difference of about 60 or 70 or maybe so more so years and that you know the grand solar minimum we've only noticed the decline over the last three solar cycles so we're going back 33 years but if we compare what's took place over the last 30 years with the magnetic pole migration things have really started to accelerate if you remember the chart i showed you the other day it's almost going vertical and it's migrated in the last 30 years, a 1,000 miles, as opposed to the 90 years before it, only migrating 500. Things are picking up. I was talking about earthquakes the other day, that, you know, in the last uh, 20 years, we've had more, uh, we've had a third of the entire earthquakes that have been the, uh, you know, in magnitude 8 point something or 9 point something. You know, these are the worst earthquakes that we've recorded over the last 100 years. And we've had... Uh, you know, 30% of those take place since the year 2000. That's a massive increase in earthquake in earthquake um, and magnitude, um, you know, taking place. I say all these things are scaling up at this point in time, and there is going to be at some point, you know, a dramatic change for the way we go about our business on this planet. But right now, I'm just focusing in this upload just to give you guys, you know, a little bit more understanding because how easy is it, like I say, when we go to the shop, do we just take for granted that this produce is on the shelves for us to have and we don't give any consideration to the farmer that he's wiping his brow every day worrying about whether he's going to get a crop out of the ground this year and he's going to pay his bills or he's going to lose his family's land that he's had passed down to him for years and years. We don't, do we? And, you know, there's a worse case scenario taking place right now in some of the eastern countries, the poorer countries in our world, where it has got to the level, and I dare say this has happened in the western countries as well, where the suicide rates of farmers is increasing at an alarming rate. And the reason for this is the same as, as what's going on around the world. The, the cropping seasons have changed. You know, they're no longer able to get the crops out of the ground. They've borrowed money secured on their lands that has been in their families for years and years and they've lost the property they're out of the business and they don't know what else to do because it's the only thing they've ever known what to do and as a result they take their own lives you know <clears throat> i i was thinking about the problem that, you know how to address the problem internationally and it's very difficult because of you know the seasons are changing everywhere i mean if if it's a matter of you know one or two degrees changing temperature then maybe we should work internationally together where you know those crops that are favored in that change of temperature where it's a little bit warmer we grow them there and we export them around the world or vice versa i dare say some of this is happening to some degree but you know what with the changes that are taking place and how fast the changes take place you know it might even be that we lose the crops where we chose for the better outcome in that part of the world that we chose so right now even if we had a strategy to deal with the problem i still feel it would fall short because of the uncertainty and the lack of predictability of our climate right now and if climatologists and scientists were more often more honest they'd be this out in the mainstream media a little bit more and they'd be giving people a heads up it seems the only way that we can avoid first of all it affecting ourselves is probably turning to a little agricultural ourselves and this isn't something you can pick up in a couple of weeks this takes practice 
first of all you have to know about the ground the nutrients needed to grow your crops and also you know uh, the uh, climate that the crops need and how you're going to overcome some of the problems and if you look at this this photograph that we're looking at i think a lot of farming in the future is going to turn to polytunnel grown you know if you wanted to um, invest in polytunnels probably now would be a good time because i think controlling the environment in which the crops grow such as in a polytunnel it might be the way that you avoid you know climate affecting your crops let's face it you can control at least the amount of water that gets into those uh, polytunnels you can control the humidity you can control the temperature and for that ticks a lot of boxes uh, in agriculture to secure good crops so you know that might be the way that things change uh, globally across you know the world as a result you know in, as a way of uh, overcoming some of the climate problems that are causing agriculture right now but if farmers I've got to go to these extremes of building polytunnels to grow the crops in. Again, it's going to drive the food prices up. And again, for that reason, it's probably a good idea that we start to get into growing our own fruit, veg, as and where we can. And I know for a lot of people in the city, they don't just have that, you know, the affordability of that luxury to do that because of the limited land that they've got. What we're going to start to see is a change, I believe, in culture across the world in a way where you know people will probably refrain from wanting to live into the, in the cities simply because if you live in rural areas you might have a little bit more of a pocket of land where you can grow your own um, I know that it's very difficult in the city that I'm close to in Birmingham in the central of uh, the United Kingdom to get even allotment space because of the waiting list that's for it now you know there's a lot of people already thinking ahead of the game and you know they it's a good place to go allotments are because you're with a lot of other people that are growing their own food and there's a lot of expertise there shared and you know if you've never picked up seeds put them in the ground before then you've got a stark uh, awakening coming to you because it's not just the case of having a seed vault of a variety of seeds you've got to know how and where and what to do with them otherwise you're going to have a lot of failures and I, I think anyone that's ever went straight onto an allotment and uh, haven't listened to you know people's advice on things have learned that uh, in the first six months when the crops have turned out useless so you know guys I think what we need to do is you know start breaking down the individual problems that we're going to be looking at in the future uh, one of them might be you know investing in a small polytunnel if we've got the room in our gardens uh, to grow food because what is the point in growing grass to be honest a lot of us just grow lawns and we do nothing with it at least if we've got uh, a polytunnel out there we can go out there we can put things in like you know herbs um, peppers chilies whatever it is you fancy you know whatever you eat and at the end of the day you'll be doing a couple of things you'll be managing your own crops and so you'll know exactly what goes on there you know it'll be agro you know it'll be organically grown if you want if you want to cut down on the pesticides that you use and the fertilizers and uh, you know for a lot of you give you a, a hobby and there's nothing better guys than going out to your polytunnel or your greenhouse pulling off a, f a few fresh few fruits or uh, herbs and things like that and adding them to your meal and at the end of the day it saves a few pounds in your pockets so you know it's a win-win situation all round and you know at a time where things are only going to start getting dearer and dearer in the shops so you know I just wanted to you know bring that little bit of awareness you know so I know even I do sometimes take it for granted when I go to the shop that the eggs are there I haven't had to collect them I haven't had to clean them you know I haven't had to deal with the chickens and things like that and I think we all do sometimes just you know take these things for granted as we do you know the rising sun every day and the moon that comes up on the night you know it's uh, a lot of easily uh, things like that are taken for granted for just before I end this video guys uh, I wanted to just say a couple of things first of all you know about the projects that we've got going uh, we managed to get the uh, magnetometers out although I am still trying to chase up Ricky in India to see what's gone on there uh, so you know a promise was made and 
I believe I've fulfilled on that promise. You know, I've got the magnetometers out there. And, you know, when the data comes into me, I'll process it and get it up on the website. I'll also bring your awareness of it on YouTube, then I. So, you know, we've got that ticked. We Before that was the Trimag system. And then after that, it was the magnetosphere system. So, you know, I have kept my promise on all the things that I've said I would deliver. And I'll continue to do that. At the moment, we are finishing off the cloud generator. I'm waiting for some parts. Uh, rather than just show you, you know, the fans and then wait for the next bits to come uh, and the next bits, I'd rather get a few of the parts together, get <coughs> some more of the build done and then show you the video and then explain, you know, and probably do a few tests with it and get you, you know, involved that way with that. But the other one I want to finish has been one that we've been talking about for a while and that's the laser, the CO2 laser. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that project and I'm thinking we're probably maybe a couple of months away from starting that project. And, um, you know, you've only got to use your imagination as to, you know, how rare that is. And everyone that has supported us, uh, either on Patreon, PayPal, uh, is going to get an opportunity to send me a little MP3 file with whatever they want transmitted out into space. And, uh, you know, if we uh, can, we'll have a special bed mounted for the laser, uh, which is programmable, which is purpose built really for telescopes, you know, the electronic guided ones, which point at a certain constellation uh, where we are over the northern hemisphere, whichever stars we can point it at. We could also uh, send your message, um, you know, to a specific star constellation, such as the Pleiades or somewhere like that. You know, I will eventually uh, complete that project. Uh, the only other thing I want to say is, guys, it is not about the money, and I hope that people realise that on this channel, because after all, if you use a little bit of logic, it's only been since January this year that we turned uh, the advertisement on on the videos to raise a little bit of extra cash uh, here on this YouTube channel to support the observatory that we've got. And you know, it doesn't raise a lot of money. Um, you've only got to do a little bit of research on YouTube to find out how much it pays with regards to how many views we get on average on, on each video. If it's two pound uh, a thousand, we're doing really well. As from, from what I've gathered, you know, it rarely goes over two pound per thousand views. So you get an idea as to what revenue we earn every day uh, on there. But it does help pay for a few of the, the bits of Bobs that we need, like you know, and we're always buying stuff here, and more so ever recently than we ever have done. Um, so you know, I want to continue, guys, um, making this observatory uh, more professional than what it is. And the only way to do that really is to include more things that are related in the topic, like you know, we want a uh, background radiation uh, counter so that we can work out where how much info how much information we're getting up with regards to the extra cosmic radiation that we're getting on there our earth and um you know things like that so you know i hope that you uh feel that you know if you have made a contribution to this channel that you have got some worth out of it and you've actually uh supported uh, a well worth project and like i say guys as long as i get you know a little bit of support I will continue to do it and I have got some great plans uh, for the near future as well as the projects that we're working on um, I want to start taking us out into the field and you know just building a bit better content for us with regards to the videos that I do so that they're not just like what they are right now you know a couple of different frames or pictures and then a lot of talk what I'd rather do is as I'm thinking of doing now is getting some radio mics together uh, going out into the field, into quarries, so that we can have a look at the geology of you know the areas around the UK, maybe over in Ireland and other places like that, and you know talk about you know the geology of the ground and you know the science related to that and how things have changed here, even here in the UK. I mean, I know there's a good fault line which I want to show you guys. Um, that believe that you're very safe on this great big tectonic plate that we're on but 
you know, at some point in our history, there was a massive fault line which goes about 30 miles and does cross the M40. Uh, if you're aware of it, there's a little area of land under scientific observation there. But what happened is, at some point in the UK's history, is that there has been a massive fault line and it's dropped at least a good 100 or so foot on one side and, you know, it's raised a good 100 foot on the other side. But this is a scar that runs across the UK for a good 20, 30 miles. Uh, which some of you might be aware of you know I want to take us down to uh, the White Cliffs at Dover I just want to point out some of the uh, you know the the geology around that area there as well uh, with regards to the fact that this was chalk these White Cliffs at Dover are made of chalk and that was zooplankton microscopic organisms that settled at the bottom of the ocean but for some reason you know again uh, it has risen a good 100 foot or more out of the sea uh, so what is going on? Well, you know, we're, we're, where our coastlines originally in the UK underwater, um, you know, were they deserts? And, you know, that's some of the questions, you know, that we want to answer in going out in the field. So I was thinking about doing that at least once a week. And, you know, it just makes it a little bit more interesting content for you guys as opposed to just talking about pole shifts. We can have a look at some of the history that's happened just here in the UK and maybe neighbouring countries. And, uh, you know, just get an idea as to what changes we can detect. And, you know, just ask the question, is it always been calm and safe um, on these continents that we believe is safe? And as, is there signs in our history where there has been some great um, uh, signs of upheaval and, you know, catastrophe? So, you know, guys, those are some of the things I wanted to get out in the field and do. And, you know, we can use the quadcopter to give you a good aerial, you know, uh, visualisation of what we're talking about, you know, with that 20-mile uh, fault line. And we can have a look at some of the other faults and uh, other interesting aspects, you know, with relation to ships to those topics. So, you know, that's just some of the things that I want to do at a later date, uh, hopefully not too distant future. And as well, um, you know, a lot more of you are asking now for uh, live um you know broadcasts on youtube and i think that's something else we can do as well where we can get you guys asking some of the questions that you want answers to and we can directly deal with that there and then so guys you know um in general you know i want to improve quite a lot of things but it's always a matter of time and you know funding so you know i'm, I'm going to leave it at that before i do uh, mistakenly mention what I usually do at this point so I'm going to just say guys you know have a great week and uh, you know as always bye for now